Today I am trying to weld with lasers and I'm going to show you all the pitfalls of the machine, where it doesn't work, where you can make a lot of mistakes, but where you can also succeed and weld things like aluminum. So let's get started. Please. Okay, not a great look about, but I'm going to polish this up a bit. I mean, it's solid, so I'm reasonably happy with that. All right, that piece is supposed to go from here to here. So let's see how we did. Cleaned it up a little bit. Just kind of buffed it with the 320 and 400 grit. A little bit of wire brush. So this isn't perfect, but I think I could straighten it out a little bit. Maybe there's some adjustments I could do. I could bring this out a little. I have I didn't want to have too many couplings. So there's a coupling here. There's two around the blow-off valve. And then, of course, there's a boot on the supercharger. There's a boot here and a boot there. It's a lot of couplings. Th these two are unavoidable because you've got to have something to this. I could weld the blow-off valve and the pipe all together. That's a possibility and just make that one continuous piece. You can see it comes off the supercharger here, down, blow-off valve, and there's my welded pipe. So that took, I had to teach myself to weld aluminum or to cheat weld aluminum to get that done. But it worked, and I'm quite happy. All right, I did a few test cuts. It definitely blew through. You kind of see the underside. Not great. This is aluminum. It was just kind of slagging through. Could I've just done this in the bandsaw shirt, sure. but I just wanted to see how this would work. I think I gave myself enough room to clean up the little messes I made. I might be able to use that piece, we'll see. Okay, this is 100% duty cycle. I had it on 10% before, so let's see what this does. Whoa! Look at that! Wow! This is very bright. I have the goggles on, but I could see how this would get pretty difficult to look at for a while. Look at that. That is so cool. Look at that. Holy crap. Oh my gosh. I'm descaling this whole welder table. Get a little slower. You can see it rasters. Wow. Get up in these nooks and crannies here. Look at that. So cool. I just feel like I'm power washing right now. That is neat. Holy shit. <laughs> well, okay. Wow. Definitely causing a fire. Neat.
That's neat. A bit more. That is so cool. Let's see what some of the... So I'm going to have to weld all around here, so let's clean off some of this. That's neat. It's really just burning paint off. Look at that. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, that looks like a. I hardly even did anything in here. I made a mess though. On my nice painted dash, I got it. Junk all over the place. I'll have to blow all this out. But... So one thing I'm learning is that it's not particularly good at filling gaps. You know, with a MIG, you could be, and even stick, you could be pretty sloppy. If you've got kind of a, not a great fit like this, you can just kind of walk the MIG across the gap and try to fill it. This doesn't really want to do that because the pinpoint of the laser is so sharp and so fine, it doesn't really want to fill gaps. So you really have to have a really, really, really good fit in order to make it work. Plus, if you have a rough surface like this, I mean, this is a sloppy, sloppy project here. I'm just, just trying to tack some stuff together. If you got a rough surface like that and you're trying to drag the point of the laser across this, you're going to hit those bumps and it's going to mess up your ability to drag like that. So you're not going to get a clean weld either. So I don't know if you can hear the fan running. Uh, this does get hot. If I do maybe four or five continuous passes, one after the other, it doesn't like it and it starts to get hot. This will be interesting. I'm going to weld this bar here to reattach my gas bottle uh, shelf, whatever you want to call it. Um, I've got a good fit here, but I don't have a great fit there or here. So given that this doesn't do really well with filling gaps, we'll see how this works. Try that again. I think the wrap up conclusion on the laser welder is that it works. Uh, and you get the wire feed going just right, it'll do really well. I need to go back and play around with the steel settings. I think I can make that work a lot better now that I've sorted out through the wire feed. Use the right groove on the, uh, on the drive pulleys, and I bet I can weld a lot of things with that. Uh, super smooth, very easy to use. I can weld aluminum now, and I am so stoked. That is pretty cool. This was really one of the main things I wanted it for. I want to try it with welding body panels and stuff on the car, but uh, so far, it's pretty nice. Very easy, very intuitive to use. You're just pointing a laser and you're making it go. I think the biggest thing that I think the biggest problem that it solves is that 
when you're welding with a MIG or a TIG, the arc tends to wander and you're always trying to like just keep control of that arc either through intensity with the TIG pedal or with how you're how you've got your MIG set up, how you're moving your hand, how clean you have the tip, all that stuff, how clean you have the surface that you're welding to. And it's not particularly easy to do, especially when your, your surface is very irregular, like a, a car. Um, still gonna use MIG, I think. Might continue to try a TIG, but this makes me say for aluminum, I don't need TIG. And that's that's quite a thing um pretty happy with with that purchase the laser cleaning works really well um the cutting i don't know yet uh you know i just tried that one piece of aluminum i might try some steel i think it's uh it's a lot like plasma cutting I mean, it it works the same as plasma cutting so if you already has a, have a plasma cutter i wouldn't really see any reason to use this unless you wanted this tool to be your all-in-one tool if you didn't, could this replace a MIG, TIG, and plasma cutter? Possibly. Possibly. So, so that's I think where you can get over sort of the the idea of cost. You know, what does a MIG cost you? Like cheap MIG is like a Hobart handler 140. I don't know how much that costs. That's when I had mine. I think it was. I've had that for over 10 years. I think it was like five or six hundred bucks. So call it 800 now. The Everlast TIG I have, the I think that's the Divergent 180 or whatever. I think that's like 800 bucks and Everlast is really cheap. You know, a, an expensive TIG welder is like 1500 um, and up. A plasma cutter, like a decent plasma cutter. If you want one that can like do CNC and stuff, they're really expensive, they're like two or $3,000. But if you want one that's just like basic you know, Hobart or Miller, you're looking in the 800 to a thousand dollar range. If you get like a cheap one, like a Harbor Freight one or something, maybe you're, you're under a thousand. So you put all those together and you're almost at the cost of this, this laser machine, but with a lot more ease. So I think it has a shot of being a full replacement for all those processes. Plus the cleaning function. The cleaning function is cool. I really like it. Um, I think it'll require more maintenance, um, have to be more careful about things and try to keep it clean. And I haven't done a wood shop project in here since I got that, so we'll see how that affects it. But so far, really happy with it. So this is David Hill with Solve Fix Build. Hope you enjoyed the video. Have a good one.